I didn't know I was going to sit here with Jay Z today. <laughs> no, not Jay Z. Stupid joke about it. Is it Kanye? <laughs> Kanye. Don't don't compare me to Kanye right now, dude. <laughs> I'm wearing all the same color. That's why I'm just wearing a tan sweatsuit. This is a nice crotch shot. So Eric Floberg. So, Shua. Where are the YouTube videos? <laughs> Wait, first, let me introduce you. Oh, yeah. Hey, Nobody everyone. Nobody knows who I am. <laughs> this is Shua. We've talked about Shua editing videos for a while now, but I think the, the reason we're making this whole video is just to give an update on my life and work right now. You've seen hints. If you watch my running channel, you know Shua at this point is my employee, my editor. This is like the first formal video we've made. Yes. With you in it. Other than me just saying... Hi. Because I've made like <laughs> six videos since you started working yeah. for me. Shua is a local Chicago filmmaker and he has his own YouTube channel, Shua Films. Got a request from him last summer when we were in the middle of the classroom drop. Hired him after a week of kind of trial that week and loved his editing chops and skills and what he brought to the table. And he's just been an awesome fit. Just hanging with the crew at Creative Club. Now we're friends. So much has happened in the last seven months. Can seven you, months. Can now. you tell them why we're making this specific video? Today, we're just going to be talking about updates, preferably around what the heck is going on in Eric Floberg's life. YouTube, doc, running, all the works. I wanted to make this video like talking to camera at first, but I'm like, that's just so tired. I don't want to like sit and just stare into the barrel of the lens. And the whole idea was to like connect with all you guys again, because I feel like I haven't really, and I'm going to share more about that in this video, but I, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been connecting. And so I guess it would make sense to sit and talk to camera. Like I'm talking straight to you, but we're doing it in this format. He's going to interview me because I feel like I do better in this format of expressing my thoughts versus like, when you know you're to, talking to someone, there's yeah, a difference. Yeah. Just like trying to perform to a camera yeah. almost It's it's just less genuine than and I think it'd be almost therapeutic for us to kind of talk about some of this stuff, too. Because we don't talk. <laughs> we never do that. <laughs> I guess jumping right into it, as they say. On the side of, like, photography, do you still do that? Yes, I do. I've been doing a lot less photo work, uh, you know, in the peak of my wedding filmmaking career. I was, you know, shooting every single week, multiple times a week, especially through the summer and the fall. And since I've gotten so much more into YouTube and short filmmaking and documentary work, it's had to take a backseat more. It doesn't mean that I don't feel passionate about it. Um, I've even posted on Instagram recently, like, am I even a photographer anymore? It feels like I, I'm kind of just rusty with it. But every time I go back to it, I have a shoot with a couple or um, do any other kind of photo shoot or shoot personal it all comes right back to me. Um, so I feel like it, it is heavily ingrained who I am, but that being said too, you do have to be practicing your craft to get better at it. And so I'm navigating those waters right now, what it looks like for me. I'm still doing engagement sessions, still doing portrait sessions, but I'm only doing about a handful of weddings this year. And I'm only doing photo weddings, no, no uh, video weddings. It's just, I drew that line in the sand for myself. It's just too much for me if I, if I take on video weddings. So what, what I have been really enjoying is film photography still. Photograph my personal life on film. And the set I just posted about our Disney trip was like one of my favorite collection collections of images I've made in a very, very long time. I'm starting to navigate like what, do, what do, on a personal level, what do I want my photography to be? And I think I really want it to start being more of that personal side, like personal projects, film photography, much slower pace, less volume. Ultimately, just sharing the work that I feel proud of on the still front. Gotten to really get to see your photos from Disney. I could feel the difference in in those photos than the the professional side of like weddings or elopements or stuff like that. Like your photography in the last four months, I feel like has really leaned into what you're saying. The vulnerability is definitely showing a lot more, mm -hmm. and that's I feel really going to add to people connecting to you, even on a personal level. Appreciate you saying that. Yeah, it's, I mean, that work specifically and very, very specifically on the Disney trip was photographs I was really excited to make. And with how busy I am with my life and business and family, it's hard to find times where I'm like really excited to make photographs. So that's what I really want to focus on. Like, sure, I'll still use it as a medium as my business. And I, I still have that skill set and I can still serve my clients in the way I need to. 
Um, but I'm really excited to like get excited about making photos again. And that's really taken like me. It's, it's been me taking time away from it to then like reinsert myself back into it in a meaningful way. Speaking of uh, life being busy with all the other things, um, documentary. <laughs> yeah. These segues are not going to be smooth. <laughs> uh, yeah, the documentary is the biggest, the biggest thing we are working on still. Uh, Gene, Stephen, and I are all have, you know, made ourselves a core team on this film. Uh, it is going to be a feature length film. If you're unfamiliar, we followed Joe Greer all of last year. We're still following him. Uh, we have one final trip we're planning right now for it. Um, but uh, the race that he was racing is a marathon race is over. Like all that shooting, we're like 90, 95% shot. Um, we just need to gather assets and get uh, the last shoot and interviews done. And then uh, we are in the process of editing right now and we'll be continuing that process through mid to late summer. It's a massive undertaking, a full feature length film, uh, terabytes and terabytes of footage, making proxies, organizing everything. She has been a huge help in that in the organizational process. But now we're just like sitting in a mountain of footage and figuring out, you know, like I've already started the film five different times. And it's like, OK, which direction do we go? By mountain, I just want to clarify, 11 terabytes yeah yeah which it could have been worse it could have been yeah i think the the new c70 raw codec is pretty forgiving in that regard if it was all c200 raw we, we would have been dead oh it would have been like 30 terabytes so thankful for that uh we're in that process we are now trying to you know figure out where what we're going to do on the back side of the project are we going we, our plan right now is to submit to a film festival if not multiple film festivals and with that being the case we can't share any of it because film festivals want you to premiere the film at their event uh, without showing it anywhere else. So that would be in hopes of executives seeing it, wanting to purchase the film for streaming somewhere. So that's the goal right now. If we don't get into festivals, it's probably just going to be a self-release where we have different assets, um, like kind of the original plan we were thinking uh, as far as distribution, but with it being as profound of a story as it is and how well it turned out, we're like, um, we're really the team, like we're really starting to be like, okay, we, I think we need to shoot bigger here, like go for the fences, swing for the, for the fences more. I, I remember what it was like I just a month after I started, or no, it was actually the month I started, we went to Franklin. I didn't even know who Joe was yet. Yeah. <laughs> I just met him. It's like, oh, it's pretty, pretty cool guy. And then, then you searched him up on Instagram. You're <laughs> like, wait, this guy's Instagram. friends with Leon Bridges. I was like, oh, he's big deal. <laughs> From a total like person who didn't know anything about this before, and like getting to know Joe personally, and then seeing you know the thought process of like going from um, focusing on the running and that side of things to going deeper into the storytelling, or talking about family. Like, I can really. Feel like a lot of people are going to connect with this film and i'm super excited to see what you and steven create with that yeah yeah it, we we're going to be just you know digging deep into joe's trauma his past and i think so many people are going to relate to that and how they coped with their trauma whether it be through physical activity like running or therapy or whatever was therapeutic for them or the work that they need to do to find that reprieve from trauma i know last year when i started we were finishing up the last uh, announcement week for the classroom. Mm -hmm. um, any news on the classroom for this year? Yeah. So the goal for this year is to get the classroom evergreen, which means it's available at any time for purchase. If you're unfamiliar, the classroom is uh, my workshop or my course on wedding photography and wedding filmmaking. There's two separate ones and they can be bundled together. Uh, we only release them in one week enrollment periods, once in 2021 and then once in 2022. And so this year we're just gonna, we wanna just make it available. So I haven't made a formal announcement yet, but if you're watching this and you've been interested in enrolling in the classroom, you can just go to education.ericfloberg.com and uh, enroll if you want. A more formal announcement will come soon, but everything is set to go for anybody to enroll at any point now. Um, if you have any questions about that, just shoot me an email at ericfloberg at gmail.com or send me a DM on Instagram and I'd be happy to help. Uh, but there's an option to do six months 
uh, of payments or just pay for all of it up front. You'll see it all on the website. With that, it, the week enrollment was definitely like a, a marketing and sales technique. And I made that very clear in the enrollment process. People don't like talking about that because it is a marketing and sales technique, but I hate not being like transparent about those things. I think it pushed people to make a decision and for the better, like the resounding response to people enrolling in the classroom has just been nothing but positive. And um, so it's been super exciting to hear people like, radically transform their businesses through learning from that so yeah it's 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 available now so you can go check it out i'll make a much more formal announcement soon and we'll start marketing it in whatever way going forward nice and if you want to know how good the the classroom is a little testimony of a client of one of your students her name is uh, yeti oh uh, yeah yeah uh she, i didn't know this until like i started working for you she was like Oh, I did a class from him. Yeah. And then I seeing how she worked in comparison to like your classroom is like, oh, I see. Oh, because you worked side by side with her. I worked side by side with her. And then uh, I did the video with, with her. And then she did my wedding the month after. Uh, oh, she photographed your wedding. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah. We haven't talked about this. No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. She was one of my like two day workshop like yeah first workshops i did in person she went to one of the first ones yeah i think on the website she's in the, fo one yeah. of the photos uh -huh. yeah she's super cool that's awesome that's super cool so it works <laughs> <laughs> i love how you're like from a client of a student i was like what are you saying right now <laughs> now i get it we've discussed a, a few different things like photography um whether that's personal work and then the, the wedding size of things and the documentary. But for the last seven years, you've been doing YouTube. Mm -hmm. You have kind of changed in your mindset of YouTube. Like, yeah. How so? Yeah. I mean, to, for full clarity, it's been about f almost five years now, oh, I think. Yeah. Um, I went full time seven years ago in June of 2016. Uh, yeah, I left teaching and then went full time with my photo video business. At, th at that point, it was like strictly weddings. It was like weddings and portraits, and that's pretty much it. Maybe commercial work here and there, but I was, I was afraid of that. And so I started YouTube in 2018, like for real, uh, and started making tutorials. And the first two, three years of doing it was just a grind. It was just like I felt like a pit in my stomach if I hadn't posted in two, three weeks. And I was like, I felt this obsessive need to have to. And for better or for worse, I think that was, uh, I mean, not necessarily a, a good thing health-wise, both mental health, maybe physical health too. Um, but for better or for worse, that kind of consistency with quality content going out is, I think, what grew the channel really rapidly, really quickly. Um, but now, as my business is much more diversified, I look at YouTube as a place where I can still do sponsorships. Um, it could be... A, a really massive part uh, of my business um, from a financial sense. Ad revenue pays a, f a fraction of what, you know, my total income is, but sponsorships like really, really help with everything that I do. I love partnering with brands that I really love and have used for years and then like facilitating or being the, the, the foundation and um, really the, the, giving us the ability to make the short films that we do to f really essentially fund the projects we do. You know, the documentary is paid out of pocket. So like it gives me the incentive and um, makes me feel comfortable enough to take risks like that. I really like using YouTube now as a, a marketing vehicle, as a place where I can share my work that I could do sponsored um, collaborations and not so much a place where I'm just like trying to feed the beast in order to grow, 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 grow for whatever reason. Because if if I'm just going for growth, like what does it mean if there's nothing else that is a stronger why or a philosophy behind it? If I'm not like selling something else or, you know, and there's other things like that, like the classroom exists now, presets, LUTs, like all those things that are available. So that would incentivize me more to make more content to try to sell those things. But um I'm just at a point in my life now where, again, the business is so diversified. There are different streams of income coming in where I'm like, I don't, I don't care to do anything outside of like what I'm passionate about doing. And so if that means making four videos in a month for YouTube, great. If that means making one or none that month, also great because I don't need it. 
Like I don't have to have it unless I have a signed contract for a sponsorship or whatever. Um, so I really want YouTube to, to from here moving forward, be a place that I enjoy interacting with and not feel obligated to post to. Yeah. It seems like not just in photography, but like all of your work revolving around social media is like only do it for the passion. Yeah. And I feel like that's what Flowberg Runs has pretty much been about. Yeah. You started Flowberg Runs back in 2020. Mm -hmm. It's 2020, uh, post start of COVID in the fall of 2020, as I was approaching my virtual New York City marathon. And, but I only made videos for like three or four months. And I think you got up to over two, 200 subs at that yeah. point. Yeah. Uh, we jump started the channel back in September. September, yeah, for, right of, before Chicago of twenty two. Yeah, which was like the perfect time because uh, he ran the second half of the Chicago marathon two weeks out from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Like I ran the course, yeah. yeah, and filmed the whole second half of the course. Super informative because they did change a few things yeah. in the course, so it was like perfect timing. Mm -hmm. um, since then, did New York marathon, which was the most brutal marathon in in history in a while very hot <laughs> so bad you just finished another one in carmel indiana mm -hmm. which hey another pr yeah that's crazy just a few months after chicago 246 eight eight <laughs> i edited that video <laughs> you didn't have to put that number on the screen <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like this whole channel i feel like you've just been able to fully express your love for running which has been really cool. Yeah. And how have you been able to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Great question. Uh, this, the running channel that we started would not be possible without Shua. He, and I made mention of this in the breakdown for the sub 250 finale uh, of the Carmel race. Uh, Shua has been editing all of the episodes of the sub 250 build. This is the awkward part where I'm talking to you, but also talking to them. <laughs> I'm Shua. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll just talk to you about this part. Um, it has been really cool just to see our ability to week in, week out, like have a very clear goal mm -hmm. on like for that, that's in the building phase, like that YouTube channel is clearly just in the building phase. Like we're in that first two to three years. The cool thing is that we can do it in a sustainable way. Yeah. It's cause like you're editing it during work hours. Like mm -hmm. I'm paying you a salary to do this. Is that making me money? No, but like I'm investing in this new thing that has a business plan eventually that will eventually become profitable. And I'm very confident that that is the case, but it gives me the ability to share about my hobby and the thing I'm really excited to talk about. And it gives me that outlet, which has been hugely beneficial for my creative life. And what I'm really excited about is, I mean, the for all intents and purposes, the channel has been blowing up. Like it's been thousands of subs and thousands of views on videos people really enjoyed the series having dozens of people come up to me at carmel and say that yeah, they that love, was awesome love watching the channel it was really really cool really sweet and i just want to be more and more involved in that world for sure and the crossover of creativity and running has just those worlds have just been melting together for years now uh with the documentary we just shot Joe Greer being the Titan photographer that he is getting into marathoning now and all the bleed over in the different worlds and how many people in the running world love photo and video. It's just so interesting. So that, that gets me super excited. It gets me excited to make short, more short films in the running world and just be in that space more. Uh, yeah, more than anything, it's just really nice to have an outlet to, to talk so that my wife doesn't have to <laughs> hear about all my splits and workouts and I can just tell a bunch of people who are actually interested in it. Um, but it is really cool to like, just give you the reins and just be like, here's the template. Here's the idea. Go for it. Yeah. And I think it's, it's been nice cause you, that's been the way to allow you to keep it a hobby. Yeah, exactly. Instead of having to like, I need to make a running video for people or yeah. for the algorithm. It's like, no, this week I'm just gonna talk about this. Yeah. It would drive me nuts. And what I am excited about this summer is like us digging more into like making it more artistic, maybe slowing our pace down, not posting weekly, but like making it actually cinematic and showing that world even more like what our skill set is in the way we can tell story through training and racing and other people's running stories it gets me pretty excited. Yeah. There's uh, a, a couple people, I won't say who yet, 
you'll have to stay and see. Subscribe to Flover Runs <laughs> to, to actually interview that are doing some amazing things. And I think that's going to be really, really cool because then it, it kind of leans more into like a documentary of other runners. And yeah. like running, from what I've learned about it over the past few months, it's like there's so much to connect to, even if you're not a runner. Mm -hmm. There's so much like therapy in there that I didn't know about. And getting to hear from you and like some of the other running people like Kofuzi, there is just so much that is just waiting to be told there. And I'm really excited to see how we do it. There's a lot of metaphorical beauty in the sport of running and some people don't connect with it and that's totally fine. But uh, there's a lot of life lessons to be had with, with training specifically for, for a marathon too. This is gonna be a long one. This is gonna be like, this is gonna be like a 25 minute video. Oof. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the editor. Um, which is which is funny because doing this has made me think about like, oh, this is what it's like to be on the podcast. Yeah. Speaking of podcasts, again, this is not smooth. <laughs> Rally caps. Yeah. Which has been going very well, mm -hmm. being, you know, starting up again. The consistency is like not really missing a week. Yeah. And it's been of great quality because if you guys haven't seen on uh, Eric's channel, we finished construction on the uh, new podcast set on the 602 right upstairs on the current Creative Club studio. And there's been what, two episodes right now yeah. with the new set. Mm -hmm. Looks great. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. It looks better than I expected. Yeah. It's cool to be in that structure now, like to have realized that idea, made it happen, and now actually doing episodes in it. If you're unfamiliar, uh, Rally Caps is the podcast Stephen Schultz and I started in 2021. We took a few breaks with it, but now being back and being in studio, we're really excited about the next steps. It's a point of contention with Steven and I about consistency on it. Um, I'm always down to like sit down and do an episode, but I I'm personally just really excited about like once that studio is fully built out and that things start to settle down and more of a growth phase in our careers and personal lives that we'll be getting like guests in studio that's what i'm like super stoked on uh, people passing through town which that's going to start happening in the next few weeks and months uh but then also just like structuring the outline of our episodes to just have like more banter and and have more transparency in like the formation of our new multi-member llc that we're starting for commercial work you know um yeah so that's just really exciting i think there's a lot of opportunity with rally caps and i know a lot of people really enjoy listening to it on a weekly basis so that's where steven wins i think there's a lot of lot to be said in in posting weekly in the podcast space um but i'm really excited to like just get ahead of the punch there and now that we have a studio built out it's so much easier to just plug and play yeah. just go right into it instead of having to set up tons of lights and make the background look good and whatever or just do audio only uh, now we have like everything at our fingertips and we're like ready to go. To to reiterate the purpose of it, it's like not only is it just a new set for Relic House, but it's like a whole unit for content creation, more specifically towards commercial work. Yeah. And you've already had a uh, commercial work that we just did last week. And in doing that, you guys booked another one. Yeah. <laughs> which is like, which is honestly really awesome because you have done not much marketing for it at all. Well, that's what I mean about the YouTube channel is like we have friends who are in this space. We have friends who are filmmakers. We have friends who are photographers. They're seeing us build out these things and they're like, hey, I have this job. I want to hire you guys. I have this job. Can I rent it? You know, it's it's we talked about it on Rally Caps on a recent episode. It's like if, if you build it, they will come. It's that whole concept of Field of Dreams. Like if you actually extend your neck out there and risk something like that, stuff is going to happen. Um, but if you, if it's just an idea and it's never realized, probably not going to happen. So if you have the capital to like take a risk on something like that, maybe be worth it. Like maybe that could be the next evolution of your career. So now, yeah, now we're like, okay, well shoot. Now we're getting like an inquiry a week. What do we do with this? I'm like, do we just blow this thing up? Do we start like building teams and start crushing commercial work? And so we're just navigating all that right now. It's really exciting. It's really overwhelming, but we're all doing it together, which makes it more palatable and tolerable. Yeah. And that's that's one thing I super appreciated once I got a job at uh, Creative Club that 
so impactful and really important to surround yourself with like-minded creatives because Mm -hmm. when you do that yes you yourself will grow because you're learning from so many different people but so much can progress when everyone is on the same page and is building to something that they believe in just like so much has happened so fast in the beginning of last year when you started the doc Mm -hmm. and now it's not even finished yeah. And people are reaching out to you, big people. Yeah. And it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. But people, like you said, you build it, people will come. Mm-hmm. Such an important lesson to, you know, if you're starting or if you're in a, a position to do something else or grow something new, just do it. Yeah. In the process of you, like, understanding how we work and specifically how you and I work together, what has the process been like of trying to emulate, like, my creative voice? Go ahead and just, like, break down kind of the conclusion of what we came to. As far as, because my intention was like, all right, cool. Like you'll learn how to edit videos in my style Mm -hmm. on my YouTube channel. And then I can keep consistency similar to what you're talking about with Flubber Grunts. And then what ended up happening? So when I started, um, I I made a couple of videos. One about um, a couple new gear. Like you mentioned, you got the R5, C70, doing a studio tour video. Yeah. It was all like really chronologically easy to edit. Color paste. It was lighthearted. Yeah. Very fun. But then going into the nitty gritty of the Eric Floberg style, that's where the creativeness started to clash a little. Not in a super bad way. It was just like, we're very different creatively. Yeah. Um, Though we have some things that overlap. You have a very specific voice Mm -hmm. for your main channel. But with the Floberg runs, the way we set it up where you're like the producer, the, the director, and then I just go in and just create the video. Yeah. And then... Nine times out of 10, just ship the video afterwards. Um, But because of that, we've been able to do weekly, be able to get out the entire sub 250 block at a super consistent pace. With the Flover, uh, with the Eric Flover, your your main channel, (laughs) it's weird saying your full name. (laughs) (laughs) With the Eric Flover LLC trademark (laughs) channel. I feel like lately, uh, I think you mentioned it, of kind of pulling in the reins of that one for yourself a little more because. You said like you're you're more in a place of refining your creative voice or in like doubling down on what it is and like getting your creative juices flowing again. Mm-hmm. Um, how's that been? Because I think the couple of videos you've been editing. It's been good. I think finding some sort of rhythm where like you can go in and, and cut like the bones of an edit and then just like hand it back to me. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Like if there's a talking head or uh, a way that we found is really helpful is if we we script the entire thing, storyboard it, have visuals and everything. And then I give you all that information and I'm like, do your best to follow this roadmap. And then you do that and I'm like, okay, great. That's like 60% done. I'll take it to a hundred. That's when it it's easy to work collaboratively on per- videos on my personal channel. But when it's like an obscure, creative short film. Like the tr- wedding. We've tried it, yeah, or wedding film. editing. like. It You're just like, doesn't, oh. every, t- every time I've tried to outsource any kind of like my creative voice on filmmaking, yeah. it never works. Mm-hmm. And so realizing that was a tough pill to swallow, but then going, okay, well, how do we utilize your skills and what you bring to the table in a way that helps grow everything? And Flowbrick Runs has been a massive part of that. Um, but also just still keeping up at least one, a video a month on Patreon, uh, other commercial and photo work, uh, especially on the commercial video side. Like if it's just raw clips or raw footage or a very straightforward thing, like you're able to handle that editing as well. And so even, even just functional gear data, like all those things you've taken the reins on and crushed. So yeah, it's just growing pains and learning that process. So I, I just wanted them to hear that as well, like what that looks like for our relationship and how that functions because it can be complicated and emotions can get involved quickly, but I've always tried to check that at the door and always let you know. If I if I tell you no, like it's not personal or like if we ever brainstorm, it's like you come up with an idea and I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, and I, I found it's, it's very important when you're, hiring someone especially in a creative position it's always great to have an open floor of communication like even if the ideas are not not accepted you want to have someone who is willing to like 
chip in mm-hmm. like what about this like mm-hmm. because a lot of things like with ai recently it can give so many different you know outcomes but it helps you figure out what you don't want yeah and then you find out what you do want yeah and i think we've been able to like sift through that and figure that out for us but when it it comes to you know where, where we started to where we are now i think what really helped you know break the ice with things is that i have a youtube background mm-hmm. i i understand YouTube. right and I've been editing since 2018. And that's like one of the biggest reasons I hired you in the yeah. first place. It's like, okay, this guy gets it. Like he yeah. understands. I know what I'm doing. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. You didn't have to teach me. Yeah. Or the fact that you just like jump into Premiere and like know everything right away. And I didn't have to teach you any of that stuff. It was like, okay, there's a huge, yeah. <laughs> huge entry point that's going to be different than taking an intern who, who knows nothing about Premiere. Um, that would be three to six months of training before they would even be up to your skill set. So right off the bat, you know, um, yeah. And then just understanding algorithm, keywording, like all the YouTube nonsense. The, well, the fact that you can like get a video ready for posting where I'm like, can you title this description? Like basically block it from the last video, keyword it for me. Like then you can check like monetization, blah, blah, blah. like you could do all the checklist right. stuff and that would have taken me 15 minutes, but that's 15 minutes I don't have to deal with, you know? So, and that's, you know, 15 minute on a call or literally having a, br- a breath. Yeah. <laughs> Just to take a break from yeah. all of the phone calls you've been having oh, lately. God, there's like eight of them this week. Yeah. <laughs> Death of me. With all the things that you do, I think a lot of people have asked you freelance work with, with photos and weddings and, you know, YouTube documentary and a f- wife and four kids. Yeah. Like, how do you do it all? Yeah, that is that is the most common question. And my stereotypical answer, the answer I've given for years is community, is the people around me. And even that can't suffice all the time. Like, if I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. And the truth about life is that you're always just going to go through seasons of difficulty and ease. Like, it's going to let up and it's going to be hard. And right now is a season of hard in some sense. Like we're, we've been remodeling our kitchen. It's been out of commission for two months. So it's kind of chaotic in our home. And that always stresses me out so much because I come home to just everything is unorganized. And then for a while it was like that the studio too was 602. Like everything was everywhere. And so both, both places I go to in my life, it's usually just studio and home most of the time and running outside. Like... To have both of those places be chaotic was was difficult. So how do I deal with that? It, it's processing all those feelings with my wife. It's processing all those feelings with my friends, like carving out intentional time to make sure that I'm okay emotionally. And I just connected with somebody at um, at Carmel Marathon, uh, John, and he um, he said he he said he was really thankful that um, that I have a voice on YouTube that I'm a dude who will talk about emotions. And I always want that to be the case. I don't want us any kind of stigma of guys feeling like they can't express those emotions because we, we all have them. We all struggle with that stuff. I think guys can really tend to bottle that stuff up and put on a brave face and not, and then like other things can come crumbling down. Which is not a way, a super healthy way to live. No. And so I'm always going to be an advocate of, of having those therapeutic moments, whether you can afford going to see a therapist or you can process that stuff with family and friends. That's what's most important because they're going to give you the feedback back to let you know you're doing too much right now. You need to pull back the reins. And, and so that's a constant conversation I'm having with my wife. We've come to the conclusion that I, I'm always going to be a, a busy person. Like, I just had, I just had a, um, a common <laughs> surgery that a lot of guys with four children might choose to have. Speaking of transparency. <laughs> that I needed, I needed to rest uh, for a while. And I'm just like going crazy at home. I'm like, when I can't, when I literally can't do anything, it drives me nuts. And I, I understand that that could be a bad thing. Like, I understand that if, if I can't just sit in nothingness, like, I should probably work on that. But at the same time, I think it's just truly how I'm wired as a person as well. Because I can channel that into beneficial things. You know, like, I could, cha- I could, it doesn't need to just be work. It could also, I could be pouring all that time into a family project for our home. I could be channeling that time into soccer with my sons. Like, 
I could be channeling that into things that aren't making a YouTube video or working on the next thing that's going to grow my business. And coming to that realization, I think was a big eye-opening moment for my wife because she, I think always just was trying to get me to not be that way. Like, why can't you just settle down? I think what she realized that that like just needed to be channeled in a healthy way, then she started to understand me more and have more empathy for me because I was similar in the opposite way with her. And then once I had more empathy for her, then I, we were able to relate to each other more and have better expectations. And so community, um, therapeutic moments, talking with people, and then channeling the energy that you do have and with your personality into what is healthy, I think is the sustainable way to go. And I think I'm always just going to kind of feel overwhelmed with everything that I do because that's just how I function. And I don't know if I'm interested in a life that's not exciting like that, as long as it's within the boundaries of, of being relatively healthy. Um, and running has really been beneficial for me in that. And hiring you has been really beneficial for me in that because it allows me to extend myself, allows me to grow my business in the way I want to. We're still only working 30 to 35 hours a week. Like, right? Yeah. Like a lot of days I'm coming in 9, 30, 10, leaving at four. Like my commute sucks now. Traffic on 90 is yeah. awful, but um, we're working from home today. Like I get to be home today and we get to do this here and there's flexibility and we're happy. Like we're happy as a family. It's a really sweet season of life, dropping my boys off at school and like doing things with them and you know, going on our trip to Disney, having that kind of flexibility. Like I had the time of my life with them there. Like it was amazing. Um, having them act in commercial work that we're doing. Like it's just, it's a very special life that I get to live and I don't want to take it for granted. And uh, yeah, I'm not perfect at it, but always working at it. With all this rethinking with work and family. I feel like at this part in your life, you're kind of like re-evaluating what goes where since you're so busy. Yeah. Like you want to be doing something. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that, how are you feeling these days with how you place yourself? Mm -hmm. I've been saying no a lot more to a lot more people. I've been really frank, just like, I'm, hey, I'm a really busy person. It kills me to have to do that, but I have to. Like, I, I can't take that meeting. I can't, I can't let you pick my brain. Like, I can't meet for coffee. I'm sorry. I know that sounds petty, but like literally my days, like hours, minutes of my days are precious to me because there are so many things. And I mean, if, again, if, if people in my personal life want to challenge that and say like, you need to cut some stuff out so that you can make time for that, Maybe, but I don't know, like we have a small group that we go to at our church. We have community there. Like I hang out with friends too. Like it's like in part of running communities and like making connections and friendships there. I personally am just in a place now where I'm not super interested in like sharing a whole lot of my personal life, which sounds really weird, which is why I'm excited to make a video like this. That's more long form and can really like pull the curtain back and you can just kind of see behind everything that's happening because I've just felt no desire to like regularly post on Instagram or make short form content or put stories up where I'm like talking to camera. Like I'm just not, I'm just not interested in it. I used to be like, I was very into that years ago, you know, three, four years ago I was making stories, talking to camera every single day, new YouTube videos out, people are asking me this, here's a Q and A, I'm going to go live, like all this stuff. And the more involved I get with like the art that I'm making and the community that we're building and the things that we're doing, the more I care about like the closeness of that and allowing my YouTube channel and the, the mediums that I've grown to share all of it, to kind of be an outside perspective, looking into what that is. Um, does that mean I want to close my community off to everything I'm doing? Of course not. Like, I love you all. I so appreciate the fact that you're like here and even listening right now still, <laughs> um, and, and are interested in like what I'm doing and what we're doing, but this is a season of my life. I don't know if it'll be indefinite or what, but as far as social media goes, like for me to be healthy with it, I can't feel any kind of obligation towards it. Like I need to have other things in my life, which is why I love doing all the things and having the different sources of income and ways to make money and do business is that I'm not reliant on these platforms. I'm not reliant on posting 
to Instagram and not reliant on making a YouTube video. And for me, that just, it gives me so much freedom in my personal life to not have to stress and be anxious about that specific thing. And I know that's not the case for everybody. I know some people feel like they're enslaved to do that because their business is reliant on it. But if you feel that way right now, I, I just want to say that, and this is specific to you too and growing your own YouTube channel and stuff. Like you only have to do that for a season. If you feel like it's an obligation now, like there should really only be a short window of your life where you kind of test that water. This is my advice because if you don't see the success you want or the growth money, income, business, whatever it is that you're going after, it's okay to, to like consider getting another job. It's okay to consider doing something else and let, letting that be a, a hobby or a passion that, you know, doesn't require you to post two times a week, you know? Um, yeah, find a job working for a creator. Yeah. You like, can still be doing something you like. Yeah. And the truth is like, sure, there are dream jobs, but like work is still work, you know? And I just don't ever want people to in the creative world to feel like they're obligated to have to be enslaved to these social platforms because they they're designed to make us feel that way as artists and artists can't function that way no, that's why we had the burnout season yeah. for the past three years and i'm i'm part of that and i think what i'm saying right now is my, kind of my form of burnout like i'm not interested in doing that stuff no i'm happy that i've come to the realization i don't have to and I'm still functioning and I have been for like a year without doing that. I'm like, oh, okay, it's fine. Yeah, it's it's like you're really leaning into the, the sentiment from Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Sometimes a moment is too precious and you just want to be in it mm -hmm. than try to capture everything. I, and I've felt that on a visceral level this past year, you know, like every time we go on a doc trip, we're at a cool running event or whatever. I'm like, man, I wish I could just experience this. Or, you know, like, I'm, I'm probably going to feel that way eventually with Floberg Runs. Like, when I'm running races, like, man, I wish I could just race this thing instead of having to film certain parts of it. I'm still in that honeymoon phase of liking doing that. But there will probably be a time eventually where I'm like, I just want to I just want to run the race. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't have to I just want to do this for me. Yeah. And it's important to have that kind of stuff in your life. And it's, it's encouraging to see people, even like Colin and Samir, kind of touching on this stuff now. You know, like artist versus media you know and making that discrepancy and knowing that and understanding the difference between the two so that's where i'm at now i hope that's um in, informative i wanted y'all to hear all this because i haven't been excited to share it in any other way <laughs> and so i'm glad we were able to do it in this format we just came up with this format literally like an, an hour, hour ago, ago. <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad we did it um I'm thankful to you if you're watching this behemoth of a video, but if you've followed me for years, um, I hope you got a lot out of what this is in the season of life for me. And it just sets really good expectations about what to expect from my platforms in the coming year or years. You're just going to see stuff that I'm like really excited and passionate about and that I want to post. Um, even if it is sponsored content, which I will be doing all year, like I'm working with really fun brands this year but it's going to be through like, it's going to be in collaboration with the things I'm excited to make. Like we have a short film coming out next week. I'm very excited about, I think I already mentioned, I'm going to be doing a short documentary on both my mother and my father. And those are sponsored videos, but like, that's really cool that a brand is like helping me make that thing, you know? Well, so. thanks for coming to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, like, and subscribe, <laughs> get bored, make stuff. Okay. Bye. <laughs>